This is Deborah Weaver, and today we're going to be sketching a standard pajama set, which is a notch collar with piping detail, and you can see we have some little um, frames here on the sleeve. So we're going to start by having our um, croquis on the page, on the bottom layer as usual, locked in. Um, I went ahead and added the brushes that I'm going to need on this file. I'm going to need a lock stitch buttonhole. Um, I have a two-hole molded button on here some uh, a bow asset for this trim detail here on the waistband of the pant and then I have some gather brushes in case I'm going to need them as well as some um, piping possible uh, trim brushes here this can be for the back neck one for the back stripping that is in the back neck here that I can see in the picture okay so we're going to start with grabbing um, the oversized top body down here this is an oversized body. Um, I'm not going to be using the hem lines because th on my sketch here we can see that um, I have a straight hem. Um, so let's go ahead and get that on my mannequin here. And as usual, we will be um, making the back from the front most likely, so we don't want, won't really need this back, but I'm just going to go ahead and move it over here for now. The back uh, croquis is underneath here. Let's get rid of the center other information that we don't need. And I can see here that my hem is straight, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, just delete these aspects here. So I have my uh, oversized body here. I've fitted it onto the croquis, and you can see here that, you know, we still have the um, hook here in the armhole. It's not quite as severe as I would normally sketch it, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. Um, stitch lines because I don't need them. I'm going to go ahead and just adjust this to my preference which is dropping the anchor down here because it does show more of the hook shape that's required in the armhole which again is where all your comments are in here. We have a shoulder forward which would happen on a woven garment like this. Okay so from here we could uh, grab our collar so we can see here that we have a rounded shape on this notch collar here and when we come over to the fashion sketch set on the collars, we can see that here, the other great thing about these files that I'm going to provide you is they also give the names of the types of collar and lapel. So this is a clover leaf, one in the um, PJ Salvage example. So I'm going to go ahead and put this onto my croquis, shrink it into size so that it's correct. Um, we can place it up here and see that that's a little bit big compared to what the picture looks like here. So I'm going to make some fine-tune adjustments here. And um, we'll be making some other adjustments to this fashion sketch set so that it looks a little bit more like what we're looking at on the garment. One, the first thing I can see here that's wrong is that this collar stand, which isn't even on the sample here, so we can take it off. If there was one, it would be one height all the way around. It would not get narrow here where the lapel uh, curl over happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup this. Well, I've got it sized how I want it now, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the whole group and move it over to the side, um, where I will ungroup it now and get rid of that um, detail back here on the back neck. But I'm going to keep, well, I, I actually don't even need the stitching information because I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, stripping on it. So here's what was back there. and looks like now we've lost the back collar shape so I'm going to go ahead and bring this down and make that into a solid back collar piece with um, an outline hopefully it doesn't right now it's just a fill so let's make it white and black and we can see here that this side has um, interfered because the line is showing. So let's just bring that in on this side. That's the funny thing uh, that you just have to keep in mind with some of the elements from the fashion sketch set is that these were done a long time ago so not all of them are actually um, flat type of details. That obviously being one of them, the collar stand, does not change size throughout the uh, application of the collar onto the collar stand. Okay, so here we have the uh, clover leaf notch lapel that we're going to be using. Um, let's go ahead and drop the side seams of our uh, body here so that 
we can have a little bit longer, we're going to come probably down to, I'd say about here, which is a standard approximate 24 inch HPS on a lady's garment. Um, we do have, as you know, this center front here, where we're going to want um, the center to be. And then because we have this button, this button front, we're going to come over to the side over here and try to match what this uh, cloverleaf lapel looks like. We want to go ahead and join this up to the um, top and close the shape if it will take and it won't because as you know from the fashion sketch set these are all separate lines that we have to use and shape build. So there's the first aspect. Let's go ahead and ungroup that all. Since we're going to be doing one side only we can just get rid of this side because we're going to be mirroring. So right now we wanted to make all of this these elements here into a shape, so shift M. Here we have our shape, let's fill it. And we still have our color forward. Um, that's all we're going to need on this, but we can go ahead and add the center front piping that we're going to need. And I brought these brushes over so that it could be done quicker. Let's see how they work. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that front line there give ourselves that brush, change the stroke size and see see if we when we change the stroke size down if it's looking a little bit more like some piping that we would want peeking out. When I take it down to that size it's about the stroke size that would look good. Um, let's see if we can nudge it in here underneath so that it appears like piping peeking out. We just need to put um, maybe a single needle edge stitch there. So when we use a brush like this, the only thing that doesn't work is the fact that it's not closed down here. So in order to get it closed, we go ahead and duplicate this over because this is a size that we can use throughout the sketch. So on this piece here, I'm going to go ahead and expand the appearance. And then I can zoom in and close it off down here so that I can fill it later with a contrast color. So let's go ahead and close it up bring those points up so that they're flush with our hem. And there's the first um, part of the piping that's happening on this garment. We don't need to close this really because uh, once we fill it with a shape, it's just going to get hidden. And let's go ahead and close it anyway. Close it up so it's all buttoned up. Bring that down, which is how it would really look. Whoops, I just widened it slightly, which I didn't mean to do. Okay, so here we have the front. Um, we could put the buttons on it in the buttonholes. Um, we do need to mirror it over to the other side, though. So I'm going to go ahead and first check that my um, collar piece is going to fit nicely onto this. And I can see right now when I go to put my collar on here that my neck opening doesn't quite match. So let's bring it up. So that it actually ends up starting to look more like the picture. Um, it looks like I just brought the fill over because I had ungrouped it. So I'm going to take that back over and make the rest match. The part that I didn't squish up yet, which is about there. Okay, we'll check that later when we go to place it on top. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and take all of this and mirror it over. Zero. Hold down the Alt key and copy it. I'm going to go ahead and bring it out onto the shoulder in a similar position and send it to the back. Okay, so here is the beginning of the wearer's left side, and we can see here that there's one, two, three, four buttons in the front. So we can go ahead now and grab our buttons. You can see I've already put the button in the buttonhole up here, and this is the one that I have grouped. So I want to copy this, Control C, click on the layer that I want it to go over, and then hit Control V because it will go now on the, on top of that layer. We can see here from the picture that there were four buttons. One would be right up here at the break. And then I'm just going to eyeball it, come down here, that's two. And then Control D, Control D, there's three and four. I would say that looks close enough to what's over here on the side. 
and there is the front aspect. Um, let's just zoom in to make sure that, that our piping and everything is on the right side of it because we can see here from how we've duplicated it down that something has gone amiss. So I'm going to go ahead and take the fill out of these so that I can see what's going on in the background. And you can see here that the button has started to just jog over slightly to one side. So I'm going to bring it back over so that it's still in alignment with this blue line here. And just try to maintain the separation that I did with the Command-D because that put it in the exact spacing separation that it needed to be, the button separation. Okay, that looks pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and move that piping over to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and fill back in my shapes here so I'm not distracted by all of the information that's in the background. Okay, so let's go ahead now from this point and we know that we're going to have to add the piping around our collar. We also know that these fills are in the background and that we didn't really need them, so I'm just going to get rid of them. We can just make the um, lines filled here. So if I take this shape and fill it in um, with white and drop it to the back, we can see that these are not shaped into pieces. So that's the other thing about the fashion sketch set that's not perfect. We have to go in and do some variations to be able to fill them with um, CAD later. So we can see that this quite didn't quite work out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab um, all of it and duplicate it over. See all that stitch information is in the back. So I'm going to try to take it out so that I can just get the pure oops, shapes that are in the background here. And I'm going to need those stitches later. Okay, so from here we can see that if we just have the this top aspect as a piece, the bottom and then the lapel in the back like how you would normally do it, then you're going to be in good shape. So being that this is not done that way, I'm going to bring that up so that it will be a separate piece. And then I'm going to get rid of this side. And do a shape build now. Let's get rid of all this information here. I'm going to keep that last one there. So let's take this and see if we can shape build here. Let's duplicate it because we're going to want two pieces. Let's see if the shape builder will. Um, divide it into two separate pieces. Okay, so we've got here one, we've got all this and group it. Just to make sure that it's separated into two pieces. It's saying that it won't ungroup anymore, so let's duplicate it and See if we get rid of the top. We still end up with the bottom piece. Okay, so it didn't quite group it the way that I needed it to. So I'm going to come back here and have it how I need it, which is there. So there's my one piece. Let's just hit Shift M so that I'm getting what I need. So there's my lapel aspect. Move up with a straight point there. And let's get rid of this part. We can see that from here we needed this to be the other shape, which didn't build for us correctly. So I'm just going to repeat it over and come back up and join it. Add a little curl there so we can see uh, how it fits. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It looks like uh, I went a little bit shy here. Let's bring that up to match it. Okay, so there we have our top element and our bottom to get rid of this. Okay, so I'm going to move this into place here. There's the front. And here's the collar piece coming over. We'll add the back in a moment. So sometimes these fashion sketch sets are good for quick projects that you don't really have to do any fill information. And when it comes to CADs, you just need to really look at it and see like where you're going to be able to use 
elements from it and where you're not. So I'm going to move that to the front. As long as it's overlapping that color piece, it should be fine. And let's just look again here. We can see that the uh, lapel aspect is actually smaller than the um, collar part. And the collar part comes down a little bit lower. So I'm going to make these adjustments so that I can match it up to what I'm looking at here on my picture. Bring this point up. Should be right basically on top of our um, on top of the uh, piping there. And then we'll just bring this out so that it looks more like my picture over here. Right? So we have the top aspect, it's a little bit bigger than that lapel piece, and it's starting to look more like that than it was in the beginning. Okay, so there is the first part that we will add the piping to. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this over. I'm going to take this out because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to take this piece over now and duplicate it, put it into my brush here and see. There it is. And if I drop on the size that I converted it to, there's my piping. Again, I'm going to have to uh, expand the appearance of this and close off the edges so that when I go to fill it, I'm not going to end up with a white aspect to it at all. So I'm going to save um, my original in case I need it for anything and expand the appearance of one. And then go ahead and close off my shape. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place it where I need it to be. Which is right here. And with the piping in this particular style, you can either add um, a single needle stitch or not. It's not required as part of the um, finishing. But you do want to make sure that these elements here, the piping is going to look like it would, where it would come down around here and then um, fill. So the hard part about when you turn it into a shape now is that you are now having a fill section, a fill aspect to it, as opposed to um, it being a fill shape like we need. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and fill it here, and we can see that it didn't join with that other line. So I need to take that other piece here close it. So now it's a closed shape, but now we can see that I went beyond where I needed to go. So I'm going to just delete the anchors and move them how I need them to look. Control C is going to let me put that down so that when I go to put the one here, it's going to look like how the piping would actually look here, where it would make that corner. Um, it would miter around that corner, but anyway, here, here's what the piping looks like on the lapel. And then it's, it's a little bit wide I would say but I'm going to just leave it so from here we just need that bottom curved section right here we'll go ahead and put it into our brush again which is this one I believe and then I drop on the size that I changed it to start here maybe that looks a little bit better here if I use that one up there okay so from here we're going to um, I'm going to just go ahead and expand this and then come in and close it up, move it onto the sketch, and keep the get rid of that gray fill in the background, which is here now, and just make it a pure fill like we just did on this one. Okay, so let's bring it up down into place. Um, we can see that we would want to tuck it behind here and have it look like it's going behind the collar. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of this information. Looks like I have two pieces there. And make it appear as if it's curving around the collar there. Just 
disappear and let's get rid of whatever that extra layer was. Okay, so here we have it growing around the back collar there. There's our piping going around the back collar. And here we have the front pretty much finished. I'm going to go ahead and move these elements off to the side in case I need them for anything. Okay, so from this we can go ahead and group um, that all those collar elements, take it off at the front, group it, and move it over to the other side. And here you have the collar aspect now. Move that into place and move this on top. And then come in and fix this uh, where's left side right here. Which is here we're going to have to add some. Just to hide it behind there. So we don't need an anchor on this one. Get rid of all these. This one has some anchors inside there that we can get tucked behind. Sometimes we can grab on it. Okay, there we go. So here is the left. We went a little bit too far on the left, so let's bring that down into place. Okay, you notice when you go into Shape Build 2, you get a lot more extra anchors that you didn't have before. Okay, so there's the front. You can see on the sleeve down, we're going to start over on this side. I don't want to minus out that, so I'm going to come higher than I need it. I'm going to come down, and I'm going to go ahead and do a full sleeve on this area here. I know what these look like laid flat because I've actually been working on pajamas, so... We're going to go ahead and fill that as with white with the one point and then arrange it to the back. Once we put it in the back, now we can bring that shoulder into the position that we need it to be, which would be right here. Okay, we can see that that doesn't touch the uh, Kofi's uh, shoulder blade area here on this arm up. So we can either curl that by just hitting Shift C and curl that up just slightly to give it some shape there, which makes it look a little more natural. And we see that there's this cuff there with some piping. Um, so it looks a little big for the body to see here. So I'm just going to narrow it out just slightly when I added that curve up there and drop it down here. That looks better to me. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and add just this line here to create my um, division of my shape here. And there's my cuff, so I can just grab those two elements and in the shape uh, area just divide it here, and then I get my two shapes. I'm going to go ahead and just drop it to the back again, because when you shape build or group things, they tend to come forward. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mirror that over to the other side, move it into position there, and then as always, we're going to bring that arm over, one or the other, right or left side. Let's go ahead and do this side this time. So I'm going to do the wearer's right side as um, the sleeve over. So we just have to take this sleeve and ungroup it. Okay, take the sleeve piece and ungroup it. And then now we're going to take these two pieces here. I don't need that smart guide there. Get rid of the guide. And divide it. Once it's divided, now again I have to arrange it to the back. Now I can take these pieces here. Okay, so I need to ungroup it again. And I'll group this bottom section here, Control G, and go ahead and uh, move it over. Okay, so I'm not copying it, I'm just actually flipping it over so that I can do that sleeve over look and bring it to the front. Okay, we still need to add the piping in the sleeve here. That can be really quick since we already have it. I'm just going to repeat this line. Okay, so control V, put it into our brush, put the piping, and I drop on the size that we need it to be. Um, as long as it fits within the outer lines, when we go to fill it, if it doesn't close on the end, these black outer lines are going to fill it anyway. So that's good. We can check that later when we go to do the print fill. So we're going to have the piping. Um, Overall, this is looking pretty good. I would say the last thing that I know that uh, I would like on my little pajama here would be a just a simple pocket on this where's left here. So I'm going to go ahead and just add that right here. 
the standard um, button front pajama element. I'm going to take the stroke down to 75. I think all the elements on the insides of sketches, when you make them a little bit smaller, tend to look better. Um, let's go ahead and maybe, uh, because we have this rounded aspect in the lapel, oh, which would I didn't get on this side, so I need to repeat that over there. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Mirror it over to the other side so we have the top part looking okay there. Now on this pocket here, I want to bring this corner in and this corner and not all of them. So I'm going to do them separately. When you do them separately, you have to actually click on here with your A tool that you're just clicking on one to bring it in. That's a 0 0.04. So I'm going to do the same on this side one and come in a 0 0.04. There you have it. Now this pocket has to be stitched on because it uh, it's a patch pocket and it doesn't get glued on. So we're going to go ahead and grab on a, oh, we don't have any stitch information on this yet. So we're going to keep it to 7.5, give it a dashed line. We can look at it later to see whether we like that. Oh, here, let's put this one on it because we'll have, that one looks good. That one's going to be on the back. Or rather, we can put it on the back collar if we want. So let's move that into the position of an edge single needle look stitch. We want it to be visible. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's move up just slightly here. There we have it. That top line gets hidden, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Control C, Control V to copy it, and then I'm going to get rid of it because I never want those extra stitches floating around. Here's my. Um, Hem, but actually, let's make that piping. Um, I'm just going to grab this over and bring it to the front. And if I add that stitch there, though, for the piping on this pocket, then I'm going to need to add the piping, basically the top stitch everywhere. Um, I'm not sure if I want it or not. It might look better, actually. So let's go ahead and add it. So I would want the piping to be down on this view. Let's go on to our stitch. We can now, since we're going to add stitch information here for the piping, add it to the um, lapel on the sleeve. So here again, I would want the piping to be uh, facing down. Add it over here on my sleeve. And then being that I already had all the color information from before, let's just see how it fits, because we did do quite a few adjustments. I don't know if it's going to fit. You can already tell that it's not. So I'm going to grab the shape of the lapel eye drop, because that will fit, since it's where I made the adjustment. Get rid of the aspect that I don't need. And bring it in. Whoops. I copied and pasted it from the sketch. That's why it would not come with me without moving the entire collar and lapel there. So let's just zoom in and see how we like this. It will definitely make for a more polished um, PJ. So I'm gonna just go ahead and keep it. The added detail here. Let's just bring that a little bit more into the corner. And then from here, <coughs> do the same thing. I drop on the part that we need, get rid of the aspects that we don't, and drop it in. Oops, again, it's part of this group, so I have to grab it separately to put it into place, which is right here. And you can see the rest gets hidden up inside of it. So that came out pretty good here. Um, we didn't, for some reason, get that grouped in there. <coughs> now, being that uh, it's part of this group, I'm going to have to grab all of these anchors to mirror it over. There's those. And then now we have this bottom aspect here. There's one, two, three, four. And let's 
since it's hanging out at the bottom here, it is. So let's just move that in. And that looks good. Okay, so here we have our PJ front. And let's go ahead and get rid of these pieces that we don't need anymore. Um, we're still going to need that back collar. So being that I've changed everything from this original file, I'm going to go ahead and just make the back collar according to what I have here in my sketch, which is here. And as usual, we will drop it to the back. And I drop on this collar piece because that's what we want. Send it to the back. We can perfect it when we go to put it on the outer back view to make sure that it's within alignment and that the stitching and everything is there. For now, um, in the back view of this inside collar, we do want to add that um, we want to have some binding there. I see it in the picture. So I'm going to take this back stitch here, Control C, Control V, and then go ahead and make sure that it's joined. Let's bring it up where we can see whoops, what we're doing. Get rid of that. And let's put it into this brush to see um, this is the back stripping, back neck stripping, binding brush. Um, let's make it a point five and see if all the stitch information shows. Looks like it's still not showing. Let's go to a point oh five. And then something's up with the brush here. Let's see what happens. We take out the fill. Um, hmm. Okay, well that brush doesn't seem to be working. So we're gonna go ahead and do it the old fashioned way, which is to make our stroke at least a seven five. Okay, well, it's a brush now, so we've got to take it out of the brush that's not working. We can come back and look at that later. Let me start the back. So we just want this to be a 0.75. I'm actually going to make this one a 0.5 and duplicate it down. Go ahead and close off the shape so I can fill it. And we'll fix this uh, in the back later. I'm going to need this stitch information because that's what's holding the whole thing together on our binding. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that so we can see what we're doing with these stitches. Um, let's go ahead and fill that. That's a fill now. Let's get the stitches in the right position. And once that is done, we can group it and put it in the back here. And this is the back neck tape that typically, let's go ahead and group it and put it in the back. This is the, we can make this brand tape or whatever you want, but it's a normal thing that covers the collar seam. So it's all that arrange everything to the back. Okay, so there's our back neck binding. And our, the only thing that we don't have is the back actual bodice piece in there that we're going to need. So let's move this out of the way now so that we can do the back aspect. Let's go ahead and move our clover leaf out of the way so we can remember what we might want to call this notch collar. Okay, somehow all my tools have disappeared. All the fun that we have with Illustrator. And it starts to act up. Okay, so here we go to the back. We're going to go ahead and make a copy of it over here to the back with the sleeve uh, in the same exact spot. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this pocket information. Let's zoom in on the back. I'm going to get rid of the pocket. And all of this collar information that we don't need. We don't need the shoulder forward. We need to move all of this uh, underneath to the back and then now we want to make these two pieces a shape after we take all the buttons out that we don't need. We still need to add a hem stitch to the front as well. Okay so here we have our pieces. Let's shape build them. 
Actually, let's get, let's get this at least ready where we, where we want it, which is up here. Get rid of that. Make of an overlap. So here is our dot. Shift in to put that into one piece. And there we have it. We're going to go ahead and keep it there. We don't need this um, shoulder forward line, and we need our collar to be in the front now. Let's go ahead and move all of this to the back to see what is there with our collar. There's the uh, binding that we added. Um, we don't really need that information here. We just need our collar to have a um, stitch on it. So we can just grab on that, Control c Control v I drop on the stitch information that we want, and move it back into place. Uh, we do need the binding. We do need the small piping back here, though. So let's go ahead and take that same line, Control j join it, bring it down, add our piping brush onto it, and I drop on the size that we wanted, and obviously it's not a dashed line, so that got taken out. Okay, so we can move that into place, and just make sure that we perfect everything here, because we don't want stitches floating off of the edge of our collar. That's never good. Let me just go ahead and bring my collar out just a little bit, so that it looks more like it's resting on the top of the shoulder, which is more normal. Okay, um, I'm going to take my binding, my piping out to match as well, and go ahead and expand that appearance, and close it. And I can move my anchors around to match what's happening on the top here. We want that to be a fill. I'm just going to leave the... Um, other fill that was in the background there. Let's set up so that we can go ahead and add contrast color and go to do the CAD on it. Okay, so last thing that you would want to add for sure is a hem stitch because the bottom is going to have probably some kind of a half inch. Um, well, looks like we have some extra. Let's get that out of the way. And we did the shape build. It stayed there. Let's go ahead and put that back into place and take our bottom information and duplicate it. It's always good to uh, make Control J one of the steps that you take uh, when you are moving things around because otherwise the line doesn't stay together. Now it will because it's grouped. And we pretty much have the same shape on the front that we do at the back, so I can just duplicate that stitch right over to the front. And I'm basically going to call this probably out in the construction information as a half inch um, single needle. It's going to go right over the piping here. Uh, let's see, in the center front, because I added all this stitch information to hold the piping down, I'm going to need to do it at the center front as well. So. Let's just take that front line, Control C, Control V, turn it into a stitch, and put it over just here. And it should be above, it should be below the buttons. If not, we're going to have to orient it behind the buttons. Okay, so it's gone behind. Let's move all the buttons to the front. It's in the back of the buttons and this lapel information here. to the front. Okay, and there we have the PJ front with the hem and all of the construction information. Let's repeat this back in here so that we can fill it with a lighter opacity when we go to fill it. Um, it looks like it already stayed to the back. Let's just make sure, whoops, I lost my illustrator there. Um, it looks like it's peeking out a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and just shrink it because I really just need it for that back view when I go to put the print in or a fill that it's going to be lighter, 40% uh, opacity compared to 100% on the 